So many uh, uh, great uh, uh, storylines in the NFL to talk about. A perfect guest, perfectly timed as we're we're going down this pop culture wormholes. The uh, the host of uh, Ten Questions with Kyle Brand on the Spotify uh, podcast network, as well as uh, Good Morning Football, seven a.m. Eastern time every single day on NFL Network. One of our favorites back here on the Rich Eisen Show is Kyle Brand. How are you, Kyle? Rich, I, I'm loving life. Are you kidding me? I, I just cashed a uh, $67 check for Days of Our Lives Scandinavian Residual. Hey! hey! Money, 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 money. So you, you saw that yesterday, huh? You saw oh, my me? God. I was laughing. I love it. I relate on a very small scale. <laughs> when those checks come in, yeah. baby needs a new pair of shoes. Let's go. Yeah, so do you really get residuals from your soap work from back in the day? It's dried up. You know, it has dried up. But for years, I would get, and they would always be from some European country. I did three and a half years on Days for Lives in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. And apparently, they still love them. In uh, you know, in Finland or or Holland or wherever <laughs> over there, because every once in a while I'll get a little check and I don't mind it. Well, I found out yesterday that folks in Spain love draft day, man. They they <laughs> they can't get enough of draft day over in Spain. You know, um, amazing. That's just so funny. Yeah, Switzerland. They love that Jennifer Garner in Spain. I, that's they what I heard about it. I'm into it. <laughs> they do. Dennis Leary is the coach of the Cleveland Browns, by the way. How about that cast? That casting option. He, he told me that he's reached out to Belichick to prepare for the role. Bless him. Is that right? I mean, if you're a if you if you're the fan of the Patriots and you're going to play a head coach in a in a in a in an NFL film, don't you use that to try and reach out to Belichick? I mean, of course oh, absolutely. you do. Absolutely, that. that's my end. And then I yeah. would want all the nuances of it. I like that the draft decision hinges upon that the quarterback had no one come to his birthday party. Like that was, <laughs> I, I love that movie for all its charms. And it's certainly the Dennis Leary, Bill Belichick impression is one of them. Hey, man, so I guess which quarterback today do you think nobody went to their birthday party because they're not <laughs> doing well in the NFL? Like, <laughs> that's it now. That's a, that's our topic bar conversation. So do you that's have it. do you have a, a, a movie that other people love, many people find uh, they love and you don't care for it, and that's the hot take. You got one of those. I gotta tell you, Rich, <laughs> I'm not a big Christmas story guy. Hey, I, 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 I'm <laughs> you and me. I'm not a Christmas story guy either. I'm and not. I'm kind of seeing people. it now from a different perspective than I did as a child. Like and now, as an a parent, so let me get this straight. Ralphie mm-hmm. wants a, a, a projectile weapon for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Now. His parents tell him the whole show, the whole movie, you're going to shoot your eye out, you're going to shoot your eye out. In 12 seconds of him having the dumb gun that they bought him because they're saps, he shoots his damn eye out. They were right. <laughs> and then on top of that, like the episode in the alley with Scott Farkas, I, I think that Ralphie has some rage issues. I don't know if I want him having a projectile weapon. The whole <laughs> thing strikes me terrible now as a parent, and I'm out. Okay. So now it just doesn't – That so you and I are, are locked up on that. Yeah, I yeah, know. it's kind of a miserable movie. Like it's he he blames his uh, using the the f bomb on Flick next door, and then Flick gets I think beaten by his mom over the phone, and then Ralphie has soap in his mouth, and that there's a miserable Santa Claus who kicks him in the face down a slide. It's like yeah. it's, it's actually kind of this weird horror take on Christmas, and I don't want my kids to see that. Yeah, I get you. I trust me, but you know, kids' movies are different when you grow up and you get you know, and then you have fresh perspective. Perfect example, I'm showing my kids Beauty and the Beast years ago, and I'm like, do I mind teaching my sons that one day if they find somebody who they like a lot, all you got to do is just lock that person up in the library downstairs and they'll, they'll come around? Like, is that, is, that, is that the message I'm sending them? You know, and every, it is. You know, in every yeah, Disney yeah, movie, uh, the parents eat it in, in every single Disney movie. And I'm like, hmm, what am I telling my kids right now? You know? Oh, like, yeah, Bell, Belle's mom is nowhere to be seen. And then, you know, Rich, they, <laughs> the Disney formula was just kill off all the parents. And they're like, no, we're going to start differently. We're going to have this Frozen movie. And it's, these two young gals, they're great, it's beautiful. <laughs> family and look they live in this castle and everything 10 minutes into the movie both parents killed in a boat out. Like dead out wait out. Yes. spoiler alert dude what do you mean Man. spoiler alert no. sorry first 30 seconds of the movie they go down in the ship here, yes they go down with a ship yeah it's awful awful it is all right very good Kyle brand here on the rich eisen show um so i will ask you the question that chris brockman yep. asked me earlier on in our new segment that uh, we just came up with because we had it. We had time to kill. Um, called uh, what? Would we, what are we calling it? What's more likely? What's more likely? Oh, I love it. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, ask him the question about this weekend's uh, big Week Eleven matchup in Arrowhead. Chris Brockman. Uh, ask him uh, that. Yes. Ask Matt, him that one. Massive ask- game there, uh, Kyle. Cowboys mm-hmm. Chiefs. Yep. What's more likely? Cowboys make the Super Bowl. 
Chiefs put, make the Super Bowl. Go for it. Kyle Bryant, the floor's yours. Well, I'm looking at this game. I, I'm calling it the Poser Bowl. One of these teams is posers. They, they're, oh. they're trying to be cool, and they're not. We're going to find out. One, it's, it's one of these, like, uh, <laughs> WWE does, like, their loser leaves town. Like, I, I'm not interested in either of these teams, whoever they lose. If they win, I think Dallas is more likely, guys. I really do. I, I, I'm actually picking Dallas outright in this game because oh. – we shifted. We, for two months, we said, what's wrong with the Chiefs? And then this week, we said, are the Chiefs back? I don't think so. I, Rich, I look at it this way. When I was in my, um, let's call it my drinking prime in my mid-20s, <laughs> I would often suffer a hangover. And the next day, uh, in the morning, like the day is wasted. You don't want to get off the couch. You feel like, hell, terrible decisions. That was the Chiefs for a while. And then inevitably, there was this moment around 2 p.m. when it just would feel like it was gone. I think it's fine. I think I can get up and be productive. That's nonsense. It's just a brief respite from your hangover. It's hangover fool's gold. You go out, you try to do something, and it hits you like a ton of bricks a half hour later. I think we got the hangover fool's gold last week from the Chiefs against the Raiders. I really do. I'm not going to take the cheese on that one. I still don't think this is a great team. I think Dallas is going to beat them. I chose the Chiefs because the AFC is an easier path to the basket here in Los Angeles Mm. than the Mm -hmm. NFC. You know, that at some point the Cowboys are going to have to go up against one of the Bays. Uh, potentially, mm-hmm. potentially somebody from the NFC West mm-hmm. who I imagine will have a better chance of it in January than the current state of the top of the NFC West right now with the banged up Cardinals and then the Rams, whatever's going on with them. And that's why that's why I chose the Chiefs. That's the, why I chose it's them. a good point because the word we've been using, uh, the AFC right now is goulash. It's just a bunch of mishmash and spices and meat and sauce, and I, I don't think anything really sticks. That's an absolute mess. If you were to say, Rich, it's one of these fun conversations, we would go back to August and be like, all right, heading into Thanksgiving, the number one team in the AFC is going to be the Titans without Derrick Henry. Correct. That's asinine. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Or, and so or, or we have them. Right. We have the Bills who uh, lost 9-6 to six to the Jaguars. We have the Titans who lost to the Jets. We have the Ravens who got crushed by the Dolphins. There is no, there is no champion. If you're going to do a trial by combat in the AFC, I really don't even know who you're throwing in with. I, if the strongest choice is the Titans without their 2,000-yard rusher, that's a wild conference. Well, here's, here's, here's my mountain for that uh, trial by combat. Patriots. Here's no, that. here we go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It starts tonight. You know, short week game on the road, and I know you could say Atlanta this, Atlanta that, and who they really beaten in their their win streak. But you still got to beat who's in front of you. And a short week game on the road is no joke in the NFL. Then you're then you're home for the Titans, and then you're at the Bills. These next three weeks will show whether the rubber is truly meeting the road. Um, we've seen this movie before, Kyle. Mm-hmm. This movie has been shown before, and I know uh, what uh, M M J ten is not T B twelve. <laughs> but um, if this is 2001, we had Matt Light on earlier, it kind of mm-hmm. does look like the same movies on, on spooling. What do you think? It's really fun. It, it, and it does feel like a movie. I, I think the best barometer of right now of where the Patriots are are if you get into the heart of the Bills Mafia. And, and because they, they're right there and watching it, I get the privilege. I get to talk pretty often to Steve Tasker. <laughs> I was talking to he and Chris Brown a few days ago that he works with, and you know, they're going off. They're, they're so sensitive and defensive, the Bills, about what's going on with the Patriots. And they're saying, oh, come on, everybody's hyping this Mac Jones. And they think the Patriots can do this. Come on, that's crazy. And I go, well, guys, you are a little nervous, right? And like, oh, we're terrified. We're absolutely terrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> they're terrified because this is the best part, Rich. Let's say, let's say the Patriots do get in the playoffs. And let's say they win a playoff game and they lose in the divisional round. That's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. If you are the Bills, if you are the AFC, 2021 is nothing. I'm thinking about the 2029 Patriots, the 2034 yeah. Patriots, head coached by Josh McDaniels, still with <laughs> Mac Jones. They're t- attempting to do the back-to-back great quarterbacks. That's this year with small potatoes. It's the fact that maybe they have found someone. And guess what? That guy can't run fast. He can't do the no-look pass. He's not Kyler Murray. He just stands there and plays quarterback just like the guy before him. That's the real nightmare. Exactly. And it doesn't look like he's bothered by anything. No. Nothing. Like he's not breaking a sweat, even though obviously what he's doing is highly, highly difficult. And, you know, when when toe meets ball on that Monday night, Mm -hmm. right, in week what I guess that's 13 
So in week, Baker's dozen to wrap up Monday night, mm-hmm. and it's Bills versus Patriots, and it's time. You know, there will be a lot of butterflies in the in the Bills Mafia stomach because what if, like last year, you could say the Bills finally flipped the script, and I thought yep. that was going to be the narrative coming in because which team doesn't have a stumble with a rookie quarterback? Well, the 2021 mm-hmm. Patriots are sh- showing that is not always the case so when it all comes down to it last year you could throw it out like that was brady out and cam in and you know and who the heck knew what was going on with that quarterback situation this is kind of a different story like now is the time to slay that dragon now's the time it. right i gave belichick a year whatever he had opt outs he was trying to thing with cam it wasn't there handpicked the quarterback handpicked the free agents this has handprints all over it and i remember when the Bills smoked the patriots at the end of last year there was this long embrace and exchange between Belichick and McDermott, and it really looked like Belichick is saying, you know, it's passing the torch. Love you, classy guy, take it away, and, and, and not a chance. I, I've even gone past this, Rich. Have you, have you even, in your excitement about the Patriots, and I know you have it and you should, have you allowed yourself, have you indulged in the idea that – it could be a Tampa versus New England Super Bowl. Of course. Have you even thought about it? Of course. It has crossed oh my, my mind. God. But I, it has crossed my mind, but it is still just so, you know, difficult <laughs> to even comprehend what that would look like in Los Angeles. It's tasty. <laughs> that would be off the charts. Now, because that was the, that's what we were all talking about the minute that Brady left to go to Tampa uh-huh. is like, well, they don't play New England until 2021. So right. how about the Super Bowl this year, especially since it's in Tampa? And um, we all know, certainly right around this time last year, as Brady was, who knew, getting ready to be boat raced by the Kansas City Chiefs in the first quarter of that game of Thanksgiving mm-hmm. weekend. That was the Sunday of Thanksgiving. And Romo's like, I don't know, Jim, maybe they'll be playing each other on this field. And he was <laughs> right, you know. And so um, you can't discount it right now, man. You I know, I can't. can't and I think it. that the Mac Jones thing, I, his most impressive game was a game that he lost. His most impressive game was against against Brady. Right. It, it's he wasn't great. He didn't put up huge numbers. He didn't win, but he just he didn't his pulse didn't bounce, and he outplayed Brady. That's all, all these young guys. All they care about is do they freak out? Do they lose their head? He didn't. That's the one I remember. It's not even any of this win streak. It's that one. And oh God, I'd sell my soul to have that replay. Oh God, <laughs> Kyle, Kyle. Not only have I thought about it, oh, but boy. on Monday. You could have bet a Patriots Bucks Super Bowl at thirty three to one. Thirty three? Maybe I did. Huh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. As you know, as you know, uh, as an saying? NFL employee, I do not uh, condone this behavior. As sure. a matter of fact, I frown upon it and I'm actually confused by it. I don't know what you mean by the you. future or something yeah. like that. I don't yeah, what's thirty three to one? That that's gonna be the final score? You can't score one point. Nicely don't done. Don't worry about it, guys. Drinks on me that week. Nicely done. <laughs> Don't worry, he's just prepared in his own house with uh, Sarah Tiano rooting for the Falcons tonight. Yeah. And him. It's like, is this a separate? Is this a, se- a separate television situation? Oh no, she knows what's going to happen. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you had Bill Pullman on your pod. Um, I did. Yes, and you went flat out right in on the speechifying for for Independence Day, and um, you know we had him here in studio yeah. last week, and we we were preparing. I'll tell you. What we wanted to do was to give him a little megaphone and have him read out the uh, playoff speech and the uh, "We are who they, the Bears are who we thought they were" speech, yeah. and then and then the uh, the Tomlin "Never say never, but never" speech. Um, but then we heard that he hates people coming up with ideas exactly like that, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no! But you got him to actually go there. You actually got him. He he's he was saying some of the speech himself, right? I had him finish the speech about the the final line. And then what we did, which I guess either he was willing to do, was I said, all right, Bill, let's bring in some some competitors to this Coliseum right here. I think it's the greatest hype speech in movie history. But coming through door number one, let's play William Wallace. Let's play Herb Brooks. Let's play Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street. And we played them all. (laughs) And he maintained, he stood up for himself. And he said, I still think that President Whitmore's is better. And he had great takes. He said, listen. The Herb Brooks miracle speech is fantastic. The William Wallace speech is fantastic. I wasn't just talking to the United States or to mm. Scotland. I'm talking to the entire world Mankind. united Mankind. against this foreign enemy. And I got goosebumps when he said it. And I think he's right. Mankind, man. You know, at some point, you can't you can't trump uh, when you're trying to save mankind. You know, on oh, the planet. No, you can't. 
but he's a he's a complete gentleman. Um, Sweetheart, right? There's one point where I wanted to shake him by the shoulders, though. He gets he gets space balls. Okay, he's really young. He mm-hmm. has very few credits. Mm-hmm. Mel Brooks sees him in a play and says, "I want that guy to be Lone Star in my Star Wars spoof." <laughs> During the the shooting and the entire process of making that movie, Pullman reveals that he had never seen Star Wars, never saw the movie, had no idea. And I said, Bill, so you're doing the lightsaber fight with Moranis, and you're, you're, you know, John Candy is dressed as some sort of dog, and you didn't even get the references? And he's like, well, you know, I'm just sticking to what's on the page. I was incredulous about it, and yet he pulled it off. Wow. Next thing you're going right, to tell me, Gene, no next thing you're going to tell me, Cleavon Little never saw a, uh, a Western before Blazing never. Saddles. <laughs> My God. I got to think that, you know, the, the Wayans brothers, when they were making the scary movie, had seen Scream. I, they probably saw it before, but not Pullman. He just does what's on the page. Kyle, always appreciate our chats. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you on Good Morning Football again tomorrow, every day at 7 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, who's on your next pod? You got one you, you want to promote or, or you're still? Yeah, I got a, um, we got a bunch of them coming up. Uh, J.K. Simmons, the inimitable uh, J.K. Simmons, mm-hmm. um, Oscar winner, Whiplash. Yes. And... Um, I think we're going to get Sebastian Maniscalco, who I've always oh, wanted to talk to. Maybe. That's the best. It's so fun. Nice. Awesome. Now, there's got a lot of Chipotle takes. There's a couple of Ohio State connections with those two right there. Yeah. Number one is J.K. Simmons. Whenever he comes on this show, it's a difficult interview for me because he is a diehard. Okay. Oh, my God. I think his dad was a music teacher. Um, and so that's what makes the whiplash, um, you know, uh, uh, I guess gig so much important. And Maniscalco visited, um, Ohio state prior to the Oregon game this, this Uh year. Uh, and he wore blue at practice and I, uh, you know, so I, I think he's the reason why Ohio state has a loss this year. (laughs) That's true. Oh Yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't interviewed him, bring that one up. He'll... No, I never have, but I, oh, okay. I feel like I just did have to prep. Right? There you go. There you, there you go. My, my pleasure. Thanks again, Kyle. You're, the, you're, you're terrific, and I always appreciate you calling. Let's chat you're again You're the best, soon. Rich. Right no more Christmas you. story, fellas. I'm out on I'm he's with you, out. Buddy. That's you. a mic drop, everybody. That's Kyle Bryant, everyone. Oh, now there he is. It's the bunny rabbit. Hey. Now he's in the bunny rabbit outfit. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.